Hey friends, welcome to our next video. Today we're talking about angle of twist in a shaft due to torsion, okay? Not to be confused with the angle of twist, totally different thing, okay. <laughs> Here's a shaft. I have drawn a line down this shaft to show you that if I, if I fix one end and I start to twist the shaft, you can start to see that the shaft starts to deflect and, kind of, and this line turns into a spiral there, doesn't it? Okay, the shaft deforms, it actually twists when a torque is applied. Now, <clears throat> it depends on which way I twist it. If I twist it one way and then the other end, I twist it back the other way, that angle of twist may go down the shaft, not in a straight line there, right? I would twist the other way, but I, I'm only, I only have two hands. So I've got a little problem here for you that's going to demonstrate that. And so the way I want to do that, well, we got a new equation, don't we? There's a new equation for the angle of twist. And the equation looks like this. Phi is equal to TL over JG. Okay. Now, the longer that shaft is, the easier it is to twist. If it's really short, it's really hard to twist. So length plays a big part in this one. So let's look at this shaft over here. Let's, let's make up some numbers here. Let's say that this is um, 200 millimeters. This can be, that looks like 200 millimeters. Um, this looks like 300 millimeters. We're just making this up. This one's, that's even far, that's 400 millimeters. And then back to 200 over here, okay? So the, the length of each shaft really matters on that angle of twist. So this is length of the piece in question. Okay, this of course is torque. And we know how to find the torque in each section, don't we? We'll do that here in just a second. And then we've got uh, J, which we know J also, that's the polar moment of inertia. And remember, the polar moment of inertia is different for solid shafts than it is for hollow shafts. And here we have a hollow shaft, okay? And then G, what is G? Well, G, we know G, that goes way back, doesn't it? That's the shear modulus of elasticity. Okay, of elasticity. And that is a look em up. So let's say that this is made out of whoop, A36 steel. Okay. Can we find the angle? They want us to find the angle of twist of this shaft. Um, well, I got too many shafts in there. Shaft of point F with respect to point A. So here's point F way down here on the end, and here's point A at the wall, right? So all these different torques applied, and imagine this thing over here has a, imagine this is having a, um, a, a little clock dial on it, right? And it's straight up initially, right? It's at 12 o'clock. So as I apply all these twists, does that, does that move um, clockwise or does it move anti-clockwise from there and how much? Now one thing you need to know about phi, this is important, muy importante, is that phi is in radians okay which tells me that once i put all of these units in for all of these variables over here everything should cancel out radians is a unitless number right so if you want it in degrees and let's do that let's make it in degrees let's say in degrees okay let's just do that so we can just practice one more thing at the end We'll have to convert it from our answer in radians to degrees, and then we'll say clockwise or counterclockwise. Now, everything that we're going to do is going to be referenced from, here's your eyeball looking at the end of that shaft, okay? So point A, welded to the wall. Point A, or point F is just out in space. It's free, okay? So let's call, oh, no, no, let's do it like normal, right? Let's, uh... Let's do counterclockwise as, uh, as positive 
and clockwise is negative. That's what we're used to, right? Okay, so counterclockwise is going to be positive. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to add up, we're going to do this. Phi for A with respect to F, right, is equal to the angle of twist in section AB plus the angle of twist in section BC plus the angle of twist in section CD plus the angle of twist in section DE. And then, is there going to be any angle of twist in section EF? Is there any torque in section EF, right? Remember our trick. If we cut it in half and we cover all this up, how much torque is in that last section over there? Zero. So if T is zero, phi is zero, right? So we've got to add these four things together to get the total with one end from one end with respect to one end of the other, okay? So let's see if we can do this. Let's calculate some things that won't change, okay? J will not change. J is equal to pi over two times, I don't even know. Uh, oh yeah, it's r to the fourth of the outer minus r to the fourth of the inner. So this is gonna be 20 to the fourth minus 12.5 to the fourth, which equals Where's my calculator? Okay, here we go. Clear. 20 to the fourth minus 12.5 to the fourth equals, and then times pi divided by two is 212,977.9. Millimeters to the fourth. Okay, there's that. Now, what do we have to do? Well, we could get G, couldn't we? G, the shear modulus of elasticity. You know what? We're going to need our book, right? Now, this is in metric units that we're working with here. So, I'm going to go to the um, SI units table, right? And I'm going to look up A36 steel, which is, uh, where is that? Right there. And I'm going to read G just off of my table here. And it says G is 75 gigapascals. 75 gigapascals. Okay. Now, I've got to be super careful with my units when I build this equation over here that everything cancels out, okay? The next thing I need is the length of each, each section. That's easy enough, right? It's just given is what's the torque in each section, okay? And you can do that by just covering up, right? Okay, so here we go. What's the torque in this section here in A, B? I don't know. Well, there's a reaction torque at the wall here, right? There's some reaction torque at the wall, okay? How big is that and which way is it going? Okay, let's just see what everything's happening over here, okay? So let's do this, let's cover this up and we'll add all of that up, right? So I got um, clockwise, I got three and four and 18. So that's seven plus 18 is how much? That's 25 minus 15 nets me 10 clockwise, okay? There's 10 clockwise torque on this section. So this guy has to be 10 anti-clockwise, doesn't it? Okay, and that's kilonewton meters. Okay, so this section here, 10, uh, and I'm going to say clockwise, right? Because all of this, all of this is a net clockwise, right? So it's trying to rotate that one, leave the wall still, right? It's trying to rotate it clockwise, isn't it? Okay, what about this section of the shaft? Okay, let's cover this up. And what do we got left over here? Well, I got uh, clockwise, I've got four plus 18, that is uh, 22, and then minus 15 leaves me seven. So this section here, seven clockwise, okay? What about this section? Let's cover this up. What do we got over here? Well, I got 18 clockwise and 15 counterclockwise, which means that this section here has uh, three clockwise, doesn't it? And then what does this section right here have in it? 
right? Cover all that up. It's got, ooh, it's got 18 clockwise in it, doesn't it? So everything has got clockwise um, torque in it, right? So uh, I could, I'm going to just, I'm going to leave all these positives, right? And I know that AF is going to, the net is going to be clockwise since that's clockwise, 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 clockwise. This is going to be clockwise, isn't it? Okay. So let's just do these and add them together here. Okay. So phi for AB is equal to, okay. AB is way over here. The torque is 10 uh, kilonewton meters or 10,000 newton meters. Okay. Uh, I got to get rid of that. Uh, got to get rid of that meters, don't I? I'm going to turn that into to millimeters, right? So that's just going to be times a thousand. Okay. And then times L, uh, that's 200. Okay. Divided by JG. Okay. So this guy is going to be in 212,977.9. That's millimeters to the fourth, and then G. Ooh, G is in gigapascals. I don't like that. You know what I like? I like this. I like this. 75, one, two, three, right? If I take three, put three more zeros on there, that goes from a giga to a mega. And hey, I know what a mega is. A mega is a newton divided by millimeters squared, right? And now let's see if everything cancels out. I got a newton and a newton, a meter and a meter. Uh, this is in millimeters, right? I got two millimeters, um, and then I got two more that go to the top. So that makes four millimeters, and then there's four there. Bam, bam, all of it cancels out, right? So I got no units left. I feel good about this. I know that my calculation is going to be right. Let's see what it is. Okay, here we go. 10,000. Now remember, this is going to be in, in um, radians times 1,000, times 200, divided by 75,000, and then divided by 212,977.9 equals 0.125. So phi AB equals 0.125. Totally rad, man. Okay. That's the first one, phi BC, okay? We can go faster now. We know what everything is, right? The torque is 7, so that's 7,000 times 1,000 times the length, which is 400, divided by uh, 212,977.9 times 75,000, okay? So phi BC, phi BC is 7,000 times 1,000 times 400 equals divided by 212,977.9 divided by 75,000.175. Okay. And then finally, well, not finally, we got two more to go, don't we? We've got to do phi CD, which is going to be the torque is 3, so that's 3,000 times 1,000 times its length, CD, 300, divided by 75,000 times 212,977.9. So that one is... 1,000 times 300 equals divided by 75,000 divided by 212,977.9 0 0.056 okay well why why is that one so much smaller than those? Well, because the torque is so much smaller, right? Yep. Okay, and finally, phi DE is equal to, what do we got? Over here we've got 18 
18,000 times 1,000 times, what's that guy? 200 divided by, huh, 75,000 times 212, 977.9. All right, here we go, one more time. 18,000 times 1,000 times 200 equals divided by 75,000 divided by 212, 977.9, 0.225. Okay, so the total deflection, phi A to F, right, is going to be that one plus 0.175 plus 0.125 plus 0 0.056, don't forget about that guy, equals 0.581 radians, right? And what if we wanted that in degrees? Okay, now that's good. Oh, I should, I should put, you need to put this on there to be clear, right? That that is a clockwise rotation, right? So that thing is rotating. Whoop, now my little indicator is over there somewhere, right? So how do I convert that to degrees? Here we go. Um, 2 pi is to 180 as... That's radians, right? As 0.581 radians is to x degrees. Okay, so 0.581 times 180 equals divided by 2 equals divided by pi. Pi, where is pi? Pi equals 16.65 degrees. 66 six degrees clockwise. Okay. There you go. So that thing is going to rotate quite a bit, but it's got a lot of torque on it, doesn't it? On a little thin shaft, right? Okay. Does it make sense? The angle of twist. Okay. I hope this helps and I'll see you on the next video.